In a world that frequently emphasizes kindness, sympathy, and understanding, the notion of not being gentle with everyone may seem counterintuitive. Nonetheless, Buddhism presents a profound perspective on this matter. Gautam Buddha, the enlightened sage who established Buddhism over two millennia ago, imparted invaluable wisdom that transcends mere politeness. His teachings delve deeply into the essence of human relationships, inner serenity, and spiritual growth. In this exploration, we will inspect the profound teachings of Gautam Buddha and comprehend why at times it is vital to go beyond gentleness and embrace a more nuanced approach to life at the age of 29. Gautam embarked on a spiritual journey to seek answers to the fundamental questions of existence, why we suffer, and how we can attain lasting happiness and inner peace after years of intensive meditation and self-inquiry. He achieved enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in Bodhgaya, India. From that point on, he became the Buddha, the awakened one, and began sharing his insights with the world. Buddha's teachings revolve around the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. These fundamental principles form the foundation of Buddhism and offer profound guidance on how to navigate the complexities of human existence. The Four Noble Truths are the cornerstone of Buddhist philosophy. They provide a clear framework for comprehending the nature of suffering and the path to liberation. Let's explore these truths and their relevance to the idea of not being gentle with everyone. Number 1. The Truth of Suffering Buddha's First Noble Truth acknowledges the existence of suffering in the world. He recognized that suffering is an inherent part of human life, encompassing physical pain, emotional turmoil, and the discontent that AR rises from constantly desiring more while being gentle with everyone may temporarily alleviate some forms of suffering. It does not address the root causes of suffering. Gotam Buddha encourages us to confront suffering, head-on acknowledging its presence in our lives. By doing so, we gain clarity and insight into the nature of suffering allowing us to find effective ways to transcend. It number two, the truth of the cause of suffering the second. Nobler truth identifies the cause of suffering as attachment and craving, it is human nature to seek pleasure and avoid pain, but our attachment to these desires leads to suffering. Being excessively gentle with everyone can be a manifestation of attachment and a desire for approval or validation. Buddha teaches us that letting go of attachment and craving is the path to liberation from suffering. This does not mean becoming emotionally detached, but rather developing a balanced and compassionate attitude towards others. Number three, the truth of the cessation of suffering. The third noble. Truth offers hope by asserting that the cessation of suffering is attainable. It is possible to overcome suffering by eliminating its root causes, attachment and craving, when we cease clinging to external validation or the need to please everyone, we free ourselves from the cycle of suffering. Number four. The truth of the path to the cessation of suffering. The fourth. Noble Truth outlines the Eightfold Path, which is the path to liberation from suffering. This path encompasses ethical conduct, mental discipline, and wisdom, while being gentle with everyone might seem like a virtuous quality. The Eightfold Path encourages us to cultivate discernment and wisdom in our interactions. The Eightfold Path consists of eight interconnected principles, right? Right view and right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. The middle way often associated with Buddhism is the principle of finding balance and avoiding extremes. In the context of not being gentle with everyone, the middle way encourages us to strike a balance between compassion and discernment. Gautam Buddha himself exemplified the middle way throughout his life. Before, before his enlightenment, he had lived an indulgent life as a prince, and then he experimented with extreme asceticism. Neither extreme brought him the answers he sought. It was only when he found the balance of the middle way that he attained enlightenment in our interactions with others. The middle way suggests that we should neither be excessively gentle, enabling harmful behavior, nor excessively harsh, causing unnecessary suffering. Instead, we should approach each sit 
situation with discernment, understanding when to be compassionate and when to set boundaries. Compassion versus enabling is one of the key concerns when it comes to not being gentle with everyone. Buddhism teaches us that true compassion is not about enabling harmful behavior or sacrificing our well-being for the sake of others. True compassion involves a deep understanding of the causes of suffering and a commitment to alleviating that suffering through skillful means. The parable of the raft, beautifully, illustrates the concept of not being gentle with everyone when appropriate. This parable highlights the temporary nature of Buddhist teachings and the importance of letting go. When they have served their purpose in the parable, a traveler crosses a vast river with a makeshift raft constructed to get to the other side after reaching the other shore safely. The traveler leaves the raft behind, understanding that it served its purpose in helping him cross the river. The lesson of the parable of the raft teaches us that Buddhist teachings like the raft are meant to be tools for crossing the river of suffering and ignorance. They are not meant to be clung to indefinitely, in the same way our approach to not being gentle with everyone should be adaptive and context-dependent. Sometimes being gentle and compassionate is like the raft helping others navigate their difficulties. However, there are situations where holding on to excessive gentleness becomes hindrance. In such cases we must let go of our gentleness and adopt a more discerning approach to guide ourselves and others toward liberation from suffering, the middle path in action. Number 1. Setting Boundaries One common area where the middle path is crucial is in setting boundaries. While it is important to be compassionate and accommodating, it is equally important to establish clear boundaries to protect our well-being and maintain healthy relationships in a Buddhist setting. Boundaries are not seen as a lack of compassion, but as an act of self-care and wisdom. Number two, dealing with harmful behavior. When faced with harmful behavior from others, the middle path encourages us to respond with wisdom and compassion. This may involve addressing the behavior directly, offering support for positive change, or seeking professional help when necessary. It is essential to avoid unnecessary harshness and refrain from enabling harmful actions. Number three, navigating conflicts. Conflicts are a natural part of human interactions. The middle path teaches us not to avoid conflicts or suppress our feelings, but to address them with skillful means. This means approaching conflicts with mindfulness, active listening, and a willingness to understand the perspectives of others instead of being excessively gentle and avoiding conflicts to maintain superficial harmony. The middle part path encourages us to engage in constructive dialogue and seek resolutions that promote genuine harmony and understanding the parable of the mustard seed. Seed, the parable of the mustard seed revolves around a grieving mother who has lost her child, overwhelmed by grief. She seeks out the Buddha for help. The Buddha agrees to help her, but with a condition she must bring him a mustard seed from a household that has not experienced death, eager to relieve her grief. The mother embarks on her quest, visiting numerous households. However, she soon realizes that every home has experienced death, and there is no mustard seed to be found. She returns to the Buddha with a newfound understanding of the universality of suffering. The lesson of the parable of the mustard seed teaches us that suffering is an intrinsic part of human existence. Everyone experiences loss, pain, and sorrow. At some point in their lives in the context of not, not being gentle with everyone, this parable reminds us that gentleness alone cannot eradicate suffering. Gentleness may provide temporary comfort, but it does not address the deeper existential questions and challenges that all individuals face. Instead, the transformative power of wisdom and understanding as exemplified by Buddhist teachings offers a more profound and lasting solution to the human condition. The Art of Skillful Means Buddhism recognizes the importance of skillful means in guiding others toward enlightenment. Skillful means involve using appropriate methods and strategies based on the unique needs and conditions of individuals in the context of not being gentle with everyone. Skillful means are essential for effective communication and compassionate guidance. Number 1. Tailoring Compassion Not being gentle with everyone 
does not mean being consistently rigid or uncompassionate. Instead, it requires a nuanced understanding of each person's situation and needs. Skillful means enable us to tailor our approach to offer the right balance of support, guidance, and boundaries. Number two, recognizing individual differences. Each person is unique and their paths to happiness and well-being differ. While some may benefit from a gentle and compassionate approach, others may require more direct and assertive guidance. Skillful means recognizing these individual differences and adapting our interactions accordingly. Number three, empathy and active listening. Skillful means also involve active listening and empathy by deeply understanding the experiences and emotions of others we can respond with greater wisdom and compassion. This approach allows us to offer meaningful support and guidance without compromising our well-being. Embracing impermanence. Impermanence is one of the fundamental truths in Buddhism. It teaches us that all things, including our emotions and relationships, are subject to change and transience. Understanding. Impermanence is essential in the context of not being gentle with everyone. Number one, the impermanence of emotions. Our emotions are ever-changing, often influenced by external circumstances. Being excessively gentle or harsh in response to our emoti can lead to instability in our relationships. Recognizing the impermanence of emotions allows us to respond with equanimity and wisdom. Number two, the impermanence of relationships. Even the closest relationships in our lives are impermanent people Change circumstances change and relationships evolve. Understanding impermanence allows us to appreciate the beauty of each moment while also being prepared for the inevitable changes that life brings. Number three, letting go. Impermanence teaches us the art of letting go. It reminds us that clinging to rigid notions of being gentle with everyone is futile. Instead, we can approach our relationships and interactions with a sense of openness and adaptability allowing them to naturally evolve and transform mindfulness and self-compassion. Mindfulness is a central practice in Buddhism involving cultivating aware. West of the present moment without judgment, mindfulness and self-compassion become our allies in the journey of not being gentle with everyone. Number one, self-compassion. Mindfulness encourages us to extend compassion to ourselves in the quest to not be excessively gentle. We must remember that self-care and self-compassion are essential. Being mindful of our own needs and emotions allows us to maintain inner balance and avoid burnout. Number two, non-judgmental awareness. Mindfulness also teaches us non-judgmental awareness of our thoughts and emotions. When we encounter challenging situations or difficult people, mindfulness enables us to observe our reactions without immediately reacting. This pause allows us to respond with greater wisdom and discernment, cultivating equanimity. Equanimity is one of the Brahma Viharas or divine abodes in Buddhism. It involves maintaining mental and emotional balance in the face of life's ups and downs. Cultivating equanimity is especially valuable when striving to not be gentle with everyone as it helps us remain composed and compassionate. In all circumstances, let us remember that not being gentle with everyone is not a call for harshness or indifference. It is an invitation to embody true compassion, a compassion rooted in wisdom, understanding, and a deep desire for the well-being and liberation of all beings. As we embrace the middle way, we honor the timeless wisdom of Gautam Buddha and strive to bring greater peace and harmony into our lives and the world in the end. It is the balance of gentleness and discernment that leads us to the true heart of compassion, a compassion that transcends fleeting emotions and brings lasting peace to our cis and those around us. May we all walk this path with open HS and enlightened minds as we come to the end of this Buddhism journey. These learnings emphasize the importance of a nuanced and mindful approach to relationships, acknowledging the complexities of human existence and seeking lasting solutions to the challenges of life. Thank you for joining me on this journey of embracing simplicity and finding the true essence of life. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more thought-provoking content. And please share to one person you love the most. In last, I just want you to say, climb higher, 
aim higher with a rise aspire.